I was about to try it. I, our minds go the same way lots of time. I put this on the screen as well. Okay, we're good. Very good. Father, we come again now. <coughs> Thank you. Father, as we continue to leave, we ask for the blessing of God. Help us again, and we bless your name. Jesus' name, my first. Amen. 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 Okay. Mm. Watch out. Congress uh, line has been set. Let's do this loser. That number is one nine one seven nine zero zero one zero two two. Access code is thirty two thirty four seven. Not a a toll free number. Might be subject to long distance charges so or long distance plan. Any person wishing to address the board regarding an agenda item will be given three minutes to speak. A commenter may speak only once to each agenda item. Thank you, ma'am. With that being said, do we have a spent board to discuss draft? Dean Hatchet Golf Cart Order. <clears throat> um, if you'll recall, back in May of 2022, um, staff started the discussion with the board regarding golf carts on First Avenue and Dean Hatchet. Um, then, after we reviewed, reviewed the ordinance, it was discovered that First Avenue was already included on the list of roads. But there are additional roads on the list that are private roads. Um, that may should be removed from the list. So consequently, in July, the request was made that the board consider um, passing an ordinance that would allow golf carts on county maintained roads with a posted speed limit of 25 miles per hour or less, which our attorney did prepare. But then upon further review, we realized that there were numerous roads who that had Golf, golf cart traffic allowed, excuse me, that was above the 25 miles per hour. So Kenneth and Hank have worked very hard on preparing this map that really captures where we recommend that you allow golf carts mm -hmm. and which really identifies the county roads with a posted speed limit of 25 miles per hour or less. And then I, we have a list of roads that would need a speed limit change in order to allow golf carts on them. And I'm going to turn it over to the expert. He has worked very hard on this map, so he can walk you through it. Okay, expert. <laughs> 200 mile waiting for the beach. Okay, so let's correct the expert statement first. What the map depicts is we looked at all county maintained roads within the Steenhatchee area and then identified or you know, um, labeled each of those and identified them each based on their current, spoke, current posted speed or intended speed limit, one of the two. So what you'll see is on this map that's in front of you, the green, the dark green, the light green, mm -hmm. and the yellow are all those roads that have a current speed limit of 25 or less. So in the spirit of the ordinance as it is today, irrespective of the individual naming, just like the other communities, we currently consider allowing are authorizing the use of golf carts on those roads that have a 25 or less. If you look back to the map, you'll see there's an orange and a red. The orange and the red signify those roads, those county maintained roads that have speed limits in excess of that. That's the 30 and the 35. So we kind of went through um, the various aspects of the statutory references 
And in a nutshell, a golf cart is considered within the statutes as having is a vehicle that was intended for use at recreation on a golf course that has a, uh, a speed limit of 20, a maximum speed limit of 20, not to exceed 25. So that's its, I think that's right, sir. A maximum Maxim speed of maximum 20, 20. Maximum 20. There is another one that is called um, low speed vehicle. Low speed vehicle. I was missing another number. That picks up where that golf cart leaves off and then has a maximum of 25. Is that right? Yes. Okay, so it catches that window between 20 and 25. There's a lot of numbers this morning. Okay. Us as a jurisdiction, a political subdivision, we have authority to set speed limits um, within our jurisdiction. The statutes give guidance that when you are in a residential or a business district, that speed should be limited to nothing greater than 30 miles per hour. Given the development that you have in here, and within steam, you know, quote unquote steam hatching, uh, let's just talk first avenue, first avenue side. There is enough usage and congestion and development to characterize that as a business slash residential district. So already today, it, it makes logical sense to take and consider that speed limit needing to drop down to a 30 from a 35 that it is um, currently. Mm -hmm. If you're going to try to reach an objective of the position that the general character, the usage, and the nature of you know, quote unquote steam hatching today as being a community that supports, encourages, and desires to have that additional mode of transportation being these golf carts and you know low speed. low speed vehicles. Then you know the the infrastructure needs to be to where it's going to accommodate that. We don't want to get to where we start trying to push these vehicles onto sidewalks to where we have conflicting mm -hmm. uh, movements with pedestrians. But then again we don't want them to stay on the roads when we know that you know, by statutory definition, that golf cart has that 20 mile per hour maximum. We don't want to put something that is 30 miles per hour that's going to, you're going to get to the situations where that individual driving down the road, this impatient driver is behind them. And when you get, let's say, the stretch between park and maybe seven, third, eight, they're going to take and try to go around that. Uh, anytime we encourage vehicles to go around and get in the opposite lane, obviously you have a potential for a conflict from oncoming traffic. So immediately we know 30 is going to be life fire maximum, but it may just be a better concept to drop it down to a 25 to where we have consistency across the county as being our, um, our threshold for where we allow these quote unquote golf carts. And then we kind of get away from having to distinguish low-speed vehicles from mini trucks, from anything else that have greater arrival speeds. Because for enforcement purposes, it's going to be much more practical to, irrespective of what the vehicle is, is to enforce excessive speed on a road versus stopping a vehicle and saying, how fast will your vehicle go? because that's just not practical. So I think law enforcement at that point can look at these roads, knowing the speed limit is posted at 25 or less, seeing these vehicles going through there, then they can concentrate on something else because it's, <clears throat> it's happening every day right now mm -hmm. that irrespective of it being a 35 mile per hour road, they run up and down that road constantly. And I don't know the reason it's not being enforced, but you know, it's just something that just hasn't been enforced in the past. So what we are, our thoughts were today was, you know, how far do you go with this reallocation speed? And our thought is some of this, like going, if you look on the west, the very northwest corner, you see Roy's Road coming in from the west, and you see Steen Hatchy Acres, which is Sugar Hill, 
coming in on that east side, go both meeting there at Vitro. Uh, let me see if I can do this. Sorry. I'm talking about right here. Mm -hmm. This stretch through here of Beach Road is currently at 45. That's too much of a difference, I think, based on the usage of this road as you're heading northward back <coughs> towards the beaches to, I think you're going to get intolerance by drivers. They're not going to hold their speed to 25 miles per hour all the way out to this point. It's difficult the way it is now, uh, and it, it changes here at 25, and then it goes out to right at 6, which is the end of the original subdivision. It reversed to 35, <coughs> excuse me, it goes from 35 to 45 in that second. I would say, based on the residential characteristics, that it would be okay to change it to 25 out to this point and allow golf golf cart usage, low speed vehicle usage from that point back all the way through here with the exception of we have no jurisdiction to authorize or prohibit on state roads. They're allowed to cross it, but anything beyond that would be really up to the state of Florida. So we could still have our roads, as you see here in Kings Creek and across the highway, those are all already at 20 miles per hour. So there's no reason we wouldn't want that we would want to restrict that usage because inter, they could still use an inter-neighborhood and there's nothing wrong with that. Same is true for up here. You know, you have a cluster of 20 mile per hour roads. My guess is, is people are using those side by side and golf carts all over those areas. But we don't have the permissiveness to run and say, okay, you can come all the way back down 51 into Stinghatchee and run to the post office. Mm -hmm. So if we were to just say that, um, you know, from six, from the intersection of Sixth and Beach Road, all the way back around to, um, I guess Riverside, is that all those roads within um, you know, the quote unquote steam hatchy, that th those areas through there, I would say we drop the steam limit, but no more than 25. Okay. So you've got about a little less than two dozen, I think it is, about 20 or so roads that are still that way. And then from your ordinance perspective, you can allow golf carts on county maintained roads within the Steenhatchee community that are posted at or less or no more, with a posted speed no more than 25 miles per hour. Because if your code of ordinances now has a legal definition of the full meets and bounds of Steenhatchee, mm -hmm. and that gives a context that says we're only talking about here. And no matter what the road name is, if it's a county owned, county maintained road and it has a posted speed of 25 or less, then our law enforcement can say, it's okay for this, this golf cart to be on this road. And we know that we have controlled the speed sufficiently to where we believe it doesn't represent a hazard to the golf cart user or the, the vehicle user. Can I? Excuse me. We have identified that First Avenue South, Second Avenue South, and Second Street West, which is Beach, that will have maybe the most significant impact because they're heavily traveled. Um, Second Avenue is used as, I guess, a cut through, and that those speeds would drop from 35 to 25. The right. most flack you're going to get is first avenue. They don't want to go that slow. Mm -hmm. Some some individuals don't want to go that slow, but other individuals want to use their vehicles on that. The the golf carts yeah, and the busy vehicles. Congestion in school on that road. We need to it is. Slow it down. I mean, it's the development has moved to the point that it is man, it's busy. When we were inspecting down there for the Dollar General store. It, you, it made you nervous to stand out there beside First Avenue just because of the volume of traffic that's coming through there. It makes sense to slow that down. 
the second avenue is very much um, used as a bypass. You know, to get away from the congestion of First Avenue, they jump down to Second and zip out to Riverside. <coughs> The other one I told you when I started this was Beach Road. When they leave around by the condos, they match the gas. And I don't want to slow down. So those are the three that you're going to get a headache from. I expect you're going to get some voice of opposition. So you guys need to weigh the pros and cons of saying, do we believe seeing Hatchie is moving towards the characteristic of being um, a golf cart type of community? And if we do, then you know we'll take our lumps and bruises and go ahead and reduce these and kind of muddle through it to where you know we know that that's necessary in order to be able to allow that and still be in a safe environment. But we don't want to we don't want to reduce it, say to thirty, because like you said, then that would. A golf cart can only go 20 miles per hour, and that may not be the best solution for your golf cart users because um, that's still the the You're vehicles 10 miles per hour. over right what the golf carts can travel right. at top speed. Well, this does what I'm saying is anything 30 to 35 to reduce it to 25. Right. Correct. And the reason is is because you y'all all know this. As soon as you're on a road and the speed limit, you're traveling speed limit, and that individual ahead of you is going 10 miles less, 10 miles an hour less, your first notion is, can I get around them and, and how quickly can I do that? They're going to do the same thing when you've got a golf cart in the road, and you're, that's, by statute, can only run 20. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't mean that they have souped it up, but, you know, off the showroom floor, it should only run 20. You got somebody behind them that's sitting there saying, I can legally go 30. I need to get around them. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of thing I don't think, as congested as First Avenue is, I don't think we want to encourage um, lane changes and, and passing. Would, would this proposal at stopping at six then restrict golf cart usage and access in the roll off side? Yes. Yeah. yeah, that's 45 now. Yeah, can you uh, show We're talking that? about out here on this stretch. <laughs> oh, I see. I understand. I was saying for the rest of it. Sure. Understood. Mm -hmm. So yes, I I don't think you're you're going to build intolerance to that if you were to try to restrict it to 25 out there. You're going to get somebody kicked when they get a ticket because they're running what the road geometry really supports. You don't have the congestion. You don't have the residential business district district um, characteristics. But you I mean you limit there by the use for those folks that are utilizing their carts for going to the roll off side. Okay. So I mean that's that's the trade off, right? You say Absolutely. you're gonna get a ticket if you're going over the speed limit or you're gonna get a ticket because you're on an area that's not permitted for golf cart use. Right. And I, I would say that volume is is considerable for folks that are going to the roll off side of the golf course. Okay. We did discuss that, Commissioner Newman. I mean, we we discussed the location of the roll off site specifically, and the concern still is if motorists would just have the tendency to to travel much faster because, as Mr. Dudley said, just have it and the well it's the general road. characteristic of the road as right. well i mean you've got nothing but open road right. nothing no points of access through there your general mentality is going to be open road let's go and that's what that's how people use it today you see it you know you're i don't think there's going to be a one solution that meets everybody's objective but I think if you're wanting to focus on trying to arrive at a situation to where it's safe to have the usage that is we know is happening today mm -hmm. to make it a safer environment for them, then you're going to have to slow it down. But that's, that shouldn't be at the expense of literally slowing it down just to be able to achieve an object that 
one objective of going to the dome. Because if that was true, then all of this area up here, you know, should we go to ancient oaks? I mean, there's a bunch of people up there. Why shouldn't we restrict it to, you know, to ask the state to reduce it to 25 to go all that way? They well, should be able to come back to the town. The state's going to accommodate any way. I don't think they will either. Because. So, so I mean, I'm looking at the county maintain those ways. Understood, but they won't because their focus is not trying to figure out a way to put golf carts on the road. It's trying to use the road the way it's supposed to be used. So we're trying to add to the roads now that have always been used for vehicles. We understand the usage that's going on now to where these golf carts are becoming a more convenient means of access through there. In that close district, business, residential district area, not when you get outside of that. And I would say that the roll-off site is outside of what we would consider the dense area of Skimachie. Is that posted? Long, we have a Cuban Beach Drive when we move that. Once we limit out further to the north, remember that. Yeah, I, that was like, you know, just a yo yo. We, we moved, moved it out, moved it out, moved it out, moved it out. Is that area posted for golf cart usage now? No, no. So it's not allowed now? I don't think so. Oh, well, by these numbers, it's not allowed in a lot of places. It's not allowed. No, I mean, past present day, here. it's not allowed. Right. But right. I'm saying by these speed limits, it's really not allowed in a lot of these areas. No. It is allowed in a lot of these areas, except for um, the ones we have. They're basically your darker colors. Yeah, and that's quite a number in the area that I'm seeing here. I mean, so what I'm saying is, I don't disagree that it's not within what the parameters of the ordinance uh, allow. But <coughs> if, if the 25 mile an hour limit is what then gives the permission to use that as a golf cart. Uh, roadway, um, I see quite a number of limitations. But what you'll also see is what we started out with and said that, like these roads in here, your streets that are running north and south, your shorter segment avenues that are running east and west, where they are and what's on those and the intersections between them, they lend themselves to being 25 or less without changing the characteristic or the usage that's going on today. Beach Road is used as a higher speed roadway. Once they, like I said, once they leave the condos, my guess is there's not a lot of people that really adhere to the 35. They're already accelerating. And when you get out past Sting Hatchie Acres, you know they're on a 55 because you're in that open road um, area. And remember, just for everyone's benefit, this this ordinance was not adopted. Mm -hmm. So our point is, if you wish to adopt the ordinance, then you need to consider reducing the speed limit on all the roads on that list. The, the ordinance that had all the individual roads named was never adopted? No, no, I'm talking about the ordinance setting the speed limit at 25 miles or setting the usage of golf carts on county maintained roads with a post right. right that has not been adopted it's it's a good way to kind of do a blanket approach to it but that doesn't get you past having to address okay well which of the roads really should be at that speed or less and we are suggesting that everything within, you know, this area right here is sufficiently developed that a 25 mile per hour speed limit or less will not be detrimental to how that area is being used today. Outside of you will get a few individuals that are going to be disgruntled when they can't run 40 miles an hour down Hurst Avenue. But then again, they shouldn't. It's too fast. I'm not going to tell you they're not going to do it. I don't disagree with your concept. I do think in the spirit of having the availability on these roadways that the speed limit should be in compliance with what's allowed for the maximum of the dog car. Uh, my only concern is the restriction of use on this other segment. It's so, not a restriction because it's not allowed today. 
So we're, we're not taking it. anything away. <laughs> well, that that was my we're, point, Mr. We don't like it either way we want to. <laughs> what yeah. I'm telling you is, is we have an option here to allow it. So by not allowing it, then what I'm saying is I think there there's going to be some concern with that. Right. Because, I mean, that doesn't mean that by stating that these limits are 25, that everybody's going to go 25. It only says from That's a liability right. standpoint that the taxpayer should be safeguarded because the legal limit would be posted at the maximum speed allowed for a dog clock. Understood. And remind, remind yourself that every time we stick a, a black and white sign out there that's regulatory, you know, we are taking in and making a statement that we believe that that is the safe speed for users to travel on that segment. Sir. I don't want to take and assume the liability for allowing golf cart usage out when I know that vehicles are going to and currently are allowed to go 25 miles per hour faster than more, you know, more than two times the speed of what that golf cart is can do. You know, I have seen the the impacts from these things taken in just inadvertently making a U-turn and getting smacked with the vehicle. It's not pretty. You know, we don't want to put that in a situation to where we have a disparity between a very low, slow vehicle and a much larger, higher speed vehicle. So keep it in the context of where you have the dense development today. It makes sense. If in time development tends to migrate away, then those limits can move because at that point in time, we're going to see that the congestion is going to dictate that the speed limit, the lower speed limit move with it. You already have the definition if you if you use this framework of the steam hatchy boundary, which is already meets and bounds legal description in your code of ordinances, is that we've already <laughs> said if it's got a 25 or less and it's within this area, which these areas are, then they're already covered and you don't have to revisit it at that point. Well, I mean, you know, one of the things I'm looking at is there there is a development here north of north and I guess east of uh, Beach Road there, and I, I do know some of those. It is, and it's are. a small, it's a very small little area. So it's not a hugely populated area, no, sir, but not. I do understand there's folks there currently that you know have that potential with the golf cart. So they do, and they're welcome to use them in their inter neighborhood area. But we, I don't think we should, in clear conscience, put it to where we are going to make these large stretches of open road systems at 25 miles per hour when we know firsthand they're going to be intolerant of it, they're not going to use it that way, and then knowingly mixing much lower speed um, vehicles into that mix is not, it's not a good idea. Hmm. Are we talking about you know, wanting to extend that out to the roll-off side? Is there is there a lot of demand or is there are a lot of requests from the locals down there to want to do that? Or I think they're already yeah. doing that. Yeah. Well, I mean, if they're I guess if they're already doing it, then they're going to do it anyway. That's fine, but that doesn't I mean, that, I mean, you haven't accepted that no, or I'm, authorized it, and that's the that's the difference. Yeah, so yeah, I don't. I think they're going to do it anyway. And it's obviously it's probably not leave, nothing being enforced. So I mean I'm I do agree on the, the rest of this to move forward based on Mr. Dudley's direction here and what they've laid out. So are you suggesting that we do that stretch of road and limit the speed limit to twenty five miles per hour or we just don't address it? No, I mean I wouldn't even address it. They're doing it today and they're probably gonna do it. And that's what we're trying to say is is that let's I mean, make the logical point of stoppage is at the is this point is sixth street. That's the end of the quote unquote steam hatching subdivision. Mm -hmm. That carries it from here all the way back around to here. Actually, at, even up into this area, I mean, with the exception we can't authorize them to get on state roads. Yeah, I don't mean to put nobody on the spot, but Mr. Weir, I mean, that's kind of your business down there. What, what are you? Th this is my business. That's why I'm here. <laughs> what, are you, what, are you, what, are you, what are you here? Ultimately, uh, I, I think the idea is pretty straightforward. You're uh, Steen Hatchy Acres. I understand you're concerned as far as residents being able to go to the roll off site. Does that happen? Yes. 
every single day. It's the way of life in Skinhatchee. Um, but that's still Beach Road is technically State Road, correct? Yeah. Okay, so it's separate right. of 51. Yes, sir. Okay, so where, just for clerical purposes, where does 51 stop and end or start? Right there, just past Seahatch. At first. Yes, sir. Okay. So, yes, it does happen. Um, you do have the loop around if you go across Beach Road to Roy's Road and then come further down and tie into 6. So you are able to get around the storage units there where you are, where the speed limit now picks up. Yes. You see what I'm saying? So yes, there is a workaround. Are they going to go to the roll stop? Absolutely. Yeah. It's a convenience. One well, thing we've seen on the statute too is they allow them to cross the road with a speed limit of 45 or less, right? Yes, so they can, drop, they drop can drop physically it. cross it, but what he is recognizing and we recognize as well is that they are going to do they're going to drive down the beach road to get to the roll off site. It, uh, it happens there, everywhere. Amen. But what I am mentioning for the man sitting there is that there is a difference from our our liability to authorize that versus it happening. That is correct. So I am not going to stand here and suggest that we would authorize that. And I don't. Well, I don't want to stand here and suggest that that segment of road is would lend itself to be in a 25 mile per hour segment because the reverse is true is that now you're going to wind up, people are not going to go 25 miles per hour once because pass, the characteristic of the road is not that way. Once you pass six, then you get nothing out there but the storage unit. Everybody tends to, you know, speed up because you're edging out of the edge of Steenhatchee. As far as the development from the condos, which is Sunset, um, I drastically like that or strongly agree with the effect of changing the speed limit. One, you have the crossing there at Sunset Condos going to the uh, boat docks there. You also have the new marina there, which it's is fine there now. Okay. So, well, but I'm just saying that congestion as yes, a whole. Sir. Absolutely. Right? You've got Maddie's. You've got all the convenience of the new Dollar General, the family dollar. My place of business is, is on first. Um, the schoolhouse is already at 20 through various times of the day. So that's your main congestion as far as people walking, biking, golf cart. You've got a large congestion there, so it would only make sense to lower the speed limit in that general generalized area on your map to 25 and under. <clears throat> I mean, it, it is... It meets that definition of that residential and business district today. It's becoming more urbanized, and it, it fits within the objective of that becoming a golf cart type community, just because it is a matter of convenience. But there has to be some stopping point. So there's always going to be, can it go a little further? Can it go a little further? I am suggesting today that I would stop it at I wouldn't extend the 25 mile per hour anywhere further north than 6th Avenue. Okay, 6th Avenue, is that Sixth yellow? 6th Avenue on the west. Is the yellow mark on the left? Oh, she came. Sorry, for me. Uh, be, yes, it's right there where the, the 20 comes out. 6th so is, is right here. It goes around your storage unit here. Yeah. Watch just have a little red dot. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's, it's right here. This one is mid, and the next one north of that is six. So we would take that to 25, and then between there and probably Steam Hatchie Acres and Roy's Room Road intersection, we would take that to 35, and then go ahead and leave the balance of it at 45. Until, I guess, where do you pick up at 55? That's the roll off site. So that part would all stay the same. Well, the roll off site is that with the green one that's the top. That's the last little 15 way up here. That's the roll off site right there, sir. Okay. So we would do, um, it would be 45 through here like it is today, 35 here, and then this um, this 35 mile per hour segment would drop to 25. Yeah. So that we would have that legal authorization. Oh, sorry. So we would have all of these areas through here, and I just reviewed the West End subdivision just the other day, and then all of these areas here have the legal means then to run right back out to Second or Beach Road, and then travel back into the Steenhatchee County. 
So it, it just it makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, I think some of the, the locals, you know, we can kind of push the issue to them to, uh, at the state level to say, you know, look, this is what's going on. My guess is all down here on Riverside, they probably travel on that state road every day. I mean, I'm presuming every road you got in there, they're probably running it today, just like it's a golf cart community today, right? Yes. Yes. But as far as the liability standpoint, I understand exactly what you're saying. My understanding is as far as uh, here, you said the so 51 stops past CAG if you're going that's with right. us. Yeah, when it comes back around and ties into here, there's a lot of confusion in the general public. We're going to change that because um, we're redoing First Avenue. It's going to become the main thoroughfare, and then Riverside, where it comes up by CHAG, will become a stop condition. Yes. So you will stop there. A few years back, the state transferred ownership of First Avenue that runs along in front of the marinas and, and the condos over to the county. I bet that would probably be a beneficial thing as well. But it's already happened. Okay. So it's, it's ours now. Yes, sir. Okay. But it's still state from Seahag all the way back around to the All the way to Tennels. So yeah, pretty much Sugar Hill Road, east and west, from Beach Road to 51, everything below it would be presumed 25. And under. So no, 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 not sure. No, six. 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 So six. South. That's right. And I don't think, I mean, I, I could see <coughs> in the future, this area is kind of wet, but, you know, if it develops, because you're seeing some of that through here, is that if this develops and congests more, then, you know, we could probably, we could see that that speed limit may need to decelerate as you go further out. We have a curve and folks coming on to the roadway from the storage units of that area there. I don't have a traffic count. I can't tell you how. The geometry of that curve is conducive to 45 mile per hour. I understand. I'm not talking curve. about just the curve. I'm talking about the curve given the potential congestion and folks coming onto and exiting that roadway. And that's why we would decelerate to a 35 when you come past Roy's Road to the south. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm just, but you're again limiting that that area. Yes, sir, that you couldn't use golf cart. Not limiting anything from anything left. I haven't taken anything away. We are actually expanding the allowable use of golf carts in this whole area by what we are suggesting. Right, but you're not expanding it to Sugar Hill Lane. You are correct, sir. So that's that's what I'm getting at. I, I'm saying it's got to stop somewhere. Well, certainly. But I mean, what I'm getting at is I believe the use is there and the volume's there to, to give a consideration. And it may, may very bit, well it be easier just to go ahead and implement that now. That way you don't have the option to come back now. You, you see what I'm saying? Implement what? Implement 25 all the way to Roy's Road. And, and what I am suggesting to you is that because, and I thought you just said it just a minute ago, is that the characteristics of the road, as soon as you get past those condos, mm -hmm. people don't hold their speed, they accelerate. Well, you accelerate again right before you, right there past six, because there's nothing there but storage. Exactly. Yeah. And this is the very segment he's asking me to drop it from what they're driving today is 45 down to a 25. I mean, I've fielded the phone calls when the guy just is screaming. It's like, why are we, why is this speed this deep? You know, so. It look like if that, I don't know if he it, but. <laughs> but it looked like the one that right next to it, where this, I suppose that uh, condo right there. The road that goes out to the uh, land. Oh. The condos are right here. Okay. The yellow line on up. The yellow line on up. Yeah. Up past six. Right there. There you go. Behind the storage. These, okay. This yeah. is now, her. But now, if you're crossing that a 45 miles an hour speed in a golf cart, okay. there's no blind spots in there? All that's open? Yes, sir. You can actually see yes, sir. The sight distance is, I don't know, a thousand feet or so. Well, when you match that golf cart, will it get up and jag or? Will it slow down in there? It will only go 20 miles per hour. You have a seat far enough. Are yours, are yours governor or are they restricted to 20 miles? No, we're all on run between 18 and 20. Okay. What did he say? They'll do it right now. Majority of them. He said of all of his that he, I guess you ran on that. 
Or oh, you, 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 you the scooter man? I mean, the golf company? Yes, sir. <laughs> No, it's pretty on demand. I mean, obviously, I can't speak for everybody's personal use, but yes, there's there's very little delay. All of this really started with, you know, I'm, I'm going through the First Avenue, we're trying to get that thing, that project going, and just noticing that there were looked like a thousand. Golf cart allowed, golf cart allowed, golf cart allowed, and yet golf carts were going right past them where they weren't allowed, which is what started all the discussion when there were roads in the ordinance that really shouldn't be there because of speeds. And then hearing some of the requests or the desires of, well, you know, they're using it that way. Is there a way of to address that within the right context in the right areas. We are suggesting to you that yes, the Steenhatchee area is fit for a golf cart community, but it needs to be regulated to the extent to where you restrict that to those county maintained roads that are at or that are posted at 25 miles per hour or less because of the safety implications. So I guess the next step would be, you guys got to reach consent. You can't make a decision today, obviously, uh, but at yeah. some point, I guess we would draft an ordinance that we would bring back to you for you guys to at least formally consider. So Conrad has drafted an ordinance um, that may just need a couple of little tweaks, but Kenneth, wouldn't then, would the next step be to, well, I guess if the board drafts or adopts the ordinance, then the next step would be to reduce the speed limits on yes. those roads or not. But if you don't, if you don't wish to reduce the speed limit on first and second and and um, beach, then I don't. Then that would be restricting golf cart usage where the most traffic is. No, well, y yes, it would, but. I would suggest there are two separate items. So right. one, irrespective of changing those speed limits, we can still endorse, we are suggesting that you endorse the concept of allowing golf cart usage and low low speed vehicle usage within the Steen Hatchie community on those county maintained roads that have a posted speed limit of 25 miles per hour or less. That doesn't change. Then we address the individual roads separately because Correct. it's not just those three. There is a whole cluster here that's there posted 35 that really shouldn't be 35. Well, and that's what I'm trying to get at, but I think there would be a pretty significant impact if you don't reduce the speed limit on 1st and 2nd Avenue is what I'm trying to say. Yes. So just keep in mind, if you adopt the ordinance, then that would not authorize golf cart usage on that whole list of roads okay. and and it would have a significant impact for those who travel on first and second and that's why we're telling you that there's like 18 or 20 roads within this mm -hmm. environment that we're telling you we're we're going to come to you and say we want to drop the speed limit everything in red basically red and orange where's that orange with well, the exception of Any the state okay. Okay. thank you uh, yes sir we don't have the clear because it's red also so I just don't want somebody to be confused. Uh, my bad. Yeah. No, it's, I mean, it's noted in the legend. I think it's a lighter line that says 35 in your legend. That's red. But if you didn't know the difference with, with 51. I'm you, trying to pick a different color. Not at all. I, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't want there to be a confusion with somebody saying, well, this looks like it would be inclusive. Well, it's, it's not. Because we don't, it's not a county maintain roads. And the practicality, you know, we'll, we will actually have a list of road segments that's going to say we want to reduce the speed limit or change the speed limit from X to Y for each one of these that are affected. Then in the field, the enforcement becomes a much easier task anytime that law enforcement sees a, a golf cart or a low speed vehicle on a, a road that does not have a speed limit of 25 or less, irrespective of what kind of vehicle it is.
and him for marketing, you know, he can easily tell them, look, you got legal means to go on all county roads from such and such to such and such. Make sure you don't get on get on any that have a speed limit greater than 25. It just it simplifies things a lot. Which was the original intent of intent of asking to drop the ordinance? We just we meant we got ahead of ourselves by not realizing um, some of the roads on the present ordinance had a had a higher speed limit. I mean that's what I would do personally all across the board, just make it easy and safe on everybody. I'd take six and draw an imaginary imaginary line east all the way to fifty one. Everything below that's twenty five. Because you have roads back there on Vaughn Lane and things on this map that are thirty five. Yes, but uh, some of those are private roads, so we don't have authority to put like Vaughn Lane specifically. Mm -hmm. I can't. Well, not Vaughn Lane, but the one that you turn off of to get to Vaughn Lane. Um, I forget the right name of it. But Duncan. Maybe Duncan. Yeah. So we maintain Duncan. The dirt road back there. Right. But yeah. we don't we don't maintain Vaughn or Stark. So we don't have Duncan, the authority. Duncan to say, this is thirty five, correct? Uh, I don't know. No, it doesn't have the road name on it, but yeah, it got too congested. Yeah, um, but it, it would make it simplified for everybody. <laughs> well, and that's what so I was trying to maintain. We have a legal definition of what Sting actually has incorporated, but a long time ago we come up with a definition, a boundary of what is called Sting Hatchie. Mm -hmm. We would let the ordinance reflect those county maintained roads within Sting Hatchie. And we can reference the other code ordinance that have a posted speed limit 25 miles per hour or less you would authorize the use of golf carts and low speed vehicles on those so it's actually inclusive of all these other ones because inter-neighborhood traffic but we can't tell you you can go in private we can't tell you you can go in state and we, we're telling you don't go on roads that have a fast uh, higher speed limit than 25. Absolutely. it does actually simplify a lot I know that's a lot of work for us. Issues probably going to have a lot of headache at some point. <laughs> Somebody's going to be mad. Yeah, we've got a lot of people down there don't do nothing but getting their golf cart. Right. Go to the grocery store, go fishing, they do everything out of the golf cart. And we want them to be able to do that because we see it in the Steen Hatchie area, but that's not to mean that it's safe to do it everywhere. And that's what we're suggesting. direction you need us to move forward with drafting? It'd be a speed reduction resolutions and then um, re, I guess just tweak the, the golf cart ordinance that Conrad's already prepared. Mm -hmm. I've been offered a job with the state to be the golf cart uh, ordinance <laughs> expert. <laughs> so you get it. <laughs> no, I didn't take it because it wouldn't pay me enough. But <laughs> uh, I, I certainly agree with what um, uh, Kenneth thinks he's doing. I think that was the whole purpose of the ordinance that um, I prepared pursuant to y'all's instructions back in May, was it? Or July. July? Yes, okay. sir. All right. But um, I'm glad to work with y'all. You do the hard part and give me the easy part and I'll just, or I'll do the hard part and you do the easy part. Maybe just a form letter that for the speed limit one and then we can populate it. A resolution. 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 Yes, sir. Okay. Well, I'll look to hear from y'all if the board agrees. Mm -hmm. We can't make no decision. No, but you can have consensus, right? No, they can just y'all can just tell us to work on it. For my own discussion, I just instruct to move forward, the staff to move forward based on Mr. Dudley's direction. Based on the right. here. Don't be a bad guy. <laughs> Put your name. That's on. not my direction. I'm just helping. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but you're the expert. You and Hank are the expert. I'm not the expert. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
discuss the draft and the loan tax abatement score and make it. Just to refresh everyone's memory, I don't want to go pass out some paperwork that just takes us through the process mm -hmm. of an ad loan tax exemption. And if you'll recall, um, probably several months ago now, I brought a an old format that was used by TCDA several years ago mm -hmm. to um, to screen economic development ad valorem tax exemption applications. If you recall, um, by our ordinance, the TCDA receives the applications and they make a recommendation to the board. Mm -hmm. Um, so what we've done, myself and um, Commissioner Feeble made some suggestions, and um, Ray Curtis, the TCDA attorney, was actually develop a scoring matrix that can be utilized to consider ad valorem tax abatement applications. Mm -hmm. And I've pre-populated some of the fields just to try to make it a little uh, more simple to understand, um, with the applicant is ACME Incorporated. And if you go through this Excel spreadsheet, um, the, you know, it's the applicant, and the next question is type of tax applicant fees relief from, and it can be real property, ad valorem, tangible personal property, or both. Um, and then you would enter the amount of capital investment. And the way this, this spreadsheet <coughs> is set up is you really can't double dip. Mm -hmm. But if someone wishes to make an investment, a total capital investment of over $5 million, they would receive five points for that. So under, in total capital investment, under a million would be one point. One to five million, three points, and over five million is five points. Mm -hmm. The number of full-time permanent employees, 25 to 50 is one point, 50 to 100, three points, and over 100, five points. And again, th this is just a draft. I mean, yeah. these numbers can be changed. Um, the applicant's expected average hourly wage, um, less than 50% above Florida minimum wage is zero points. And the Florida minimum wage is $11 an hour currently. And this would change every year because, as you know, there is a, a minimum that will be set at $15 an hour. The federal minimum wage is what? The federal is $7.25. Why is that? Well, if you recall, this the Florida minimum wage was something that was voted in by Florida voters. Yeah. Yeah. So we have a mandate that it must eventually get to $15 an hour. So 20 what? 20 uh, 28, I think. 28? I think. Mm -hmm. that about right? <coughs> it's five years. Okay. It's coming. It is. Um, greater than 50% above the Florida minimum wage, but less than 100% above Florida minimum wage would be one point. And that would be 1650 an hour. Greater than 100% above Florida minimum wage would be three points. So there's a maximum total of three points for um, that category. And then phase of operation. The, the reason that we felt like the potential scoring is this way is, is the presumption that what we're trying to do is encourage people to come to Taylor County. So if it's a pre-land acquisition where the applicant has land under contract to hold an option to purchase, um, they have a maximum potential of five points. And that is contingent upon the applicant taking ownership within one year of the date of the applicant's approval. If land is acquired, um, which is um, the definition is applicant has acquired the land but has not yet broken ground. 
Approval should be contingent upon the applicant obtaining the site plan approval and a development order within 18 months of the date of the applicant's approval. That would be a maximum of three points. Mm -hmm. And then construction in progress or complete. Applicant has acquired the land and has either broken ground on the project or construction is complete. That would be a maximum of one point. Or tangible property, because remember, um, we're recommending that they don't double dip. But we don't want to ignore someone who is willing to invest millions of dollars in property that they already own. Um, so pre-purchase of tangible property um, would be a maximum of five points. And if the applicant has already purchased the tangible personal property needed for a new or expanding business, and it's already commi fully committed to the business, it would be a maximum of three points. And then if you look at the scoring matrix guide, the suggestion or a starting point is if there's zero to five points, um, it would be a suggested abatement of 30% for three years. For a six to 10 is a suggested abatement of 50% for five years. 11 to 15 is 75% for seven years. And 15 to 18, would be a suggested abatement of 100% for 10 years. And the reason for that is that if, if the purpose of this ordinance is to try to encourage people to come to Taylor County, to relocate to Taylor County, invest millions of dollars, hopefully, into Taylor County, and hire over 100 people, paying double the Florida minimum wage, which is $22 an hour, that would give them the full abatement of 100% for 10 years. So this is a starting point. Um, I know that's a lot of information in a short period yeah, of time. But you know, one that one I was thinking about, the bourbon factory wanted to come here and hire 300 people to 400 people, 65,000 miles a year average. Would you? Want to support him? Or support him? Let's say Hennessy's coming here. That's what I'm talking about. Well, that would be the purpose of the scoring matrix. Is, and again, and just for the board's information, yeah. the TCDA would be doing the scoring, and then the board would consider based upon <coughs> the results of the, of the scoring. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think that, I mean, this doesn't consider necessarily the type of business. It would be the financial impact and yes. the possibility of jobs for right. for people in Taylor County. Hopefully higher paying jobs because we're trying to incentivize people paying more than the minimum wage. And that's why they would get more points if it's double the Florida minimum wage. All right. Ready to go. <laughs> I got a question on the um, the, the recommendation that comes from the um, TCDA. I mean, you're not asking. I, mean, I think on the last one, they recommended a certain tax abatement, but really what they should be recommending is who's qualifies for it or who. Well, that would be the first. So they have to screen the application first. Yes. But they don't need to be making recommendations about what the tax abatement should be, right? The TCDA? No, they would just give us, well, they would just score out and 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 it would be so they, a number they would of points. This matrix and score on. Mm -hmm. And then the board would make the decision of the abatement for the number of years. And the percentage. Yes, sir. Okay, so we wouldn't get in that same right. difficulty. That's that's the we're trying to stay out of the difficulty that, that we've had. Well, before. I think what we're yes, sir. And what we're trying to do is present a mechanism. <laughs> Sure. So the board has, so there's some consistency because I think part of the um, part of the consternation in the past has been, well, so and so got 50% for five years. I'm just throwing out numbers, and so and so got 75% for for seven years, and it's just to be able to provide some consistency as far as how you how you um, how you make a decision about the amount of the potential abatement, the percentage, and the number of years. But do not make the mistake 
of thinking that you do not have discretion to determine ultimately what it is. Oh, absolutely not. We're not yeah. suggesting that the ordinance has changed at all. Um, well, I just, it's I just, just a just guideline. Saying, I understand. <laughs> I was just telling my client, you know, you y'all understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, and another potential usage of this type of um, matrix is in January when I bring, you know, when we come back to the board and report on what this business has or has not done, then we can compare what they, you know, we can actually use the same analogy or the same matrix to say, okay, well, what they said scored them an 18. What they actually did scores them a 12. Okay. Or whatever. Well, whatever. Yeah, I got you. Right. Okay. And then the board, I think, could make, you know, make a decision if they wish to continue with the same um abatement. So reduce or would it? Right. Increase. Okay. Probably not. <laughs> you didn't do it. Okay. Well, well, again, it's a starting point. So if yeah. you if if you like it or if you don't like it, if you wish to make some changes, um, I think we should discuss. And then when you're ready, I can put it on the agenda for the board to mm -hmm. consider. I think we should move forward with it as it's presented. Everybody, I, I, I'm okay. Because as long as I have the discretion of not supporting it at all, you know, hey, then I should get. Again, this is guidance that we would provide to the TCDA. They would actually mm -hmm. review the application. Um, they would make a recommendation based upon the number of, of points, or they would report the number of points. And then the board would have the discretion of whether they wish to. <clears throat> Whether they wish to grant the abatement or not. And again, the percentage and the number of years. I got a question for Mr. Bishop. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, so, you get a candidate to come in and they go through the scoring system. And are we at any liability to, if they sure. you know, meet all the standards necessarily based on the scorecard? And we choose to do something different. Are we at any type of liability for? We're gonna find out about that. With this, I mean, I, we're I, gonna I, find out about with this one case that's on. You know, they filed uh, a petition for a social mm -hmm. um, But I think you've got discretion. But we're gonna find out on that. You mm -hmm. follow me? What I'm saying? I guess, yeah. well, I guess you're saying that's being that question is kind of being answered now, in the process of being answered. Slowly, yeah, slowly. Would this give the board a greater protection from if there's a discrepancy in what is recommended and what the board actually grants? Maybe, maybe. So, you know, let me, let me say something. Uh, I can understand a company coming here and industrial. And they come here and they want to bring 300 jobs. And mm -hmm. then you get a, a Hennessy, if you know what Hennessy is. I, I believe the company, that's, that's a whiskey. It's going to be a high. It's going to mention bourbon at the high. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, when they come here now, there's some things need help and some things don't need help. I don't think, um, you know, we watch what comes mm -hmm. and we watch what we want here. I don't know what I say. Let a whiskey plant come here, carry it, and, and, and do a bourbon, and then they come here and ask for all these things. And first, you gonna have the money to build it to start with, because uh, in the days, you know, we all built it. But as we grow older, we learn better. <laughs> Is that what we want? Is that the kind of answer we want? We got to be able to. Well, I think that's where the discretion comes in, because remember. If, if the TCDA, say the TCDA scored them out at an 18 mm -hmm. and that came to the board, you still have to go through the public hearing process and the ordinance process before it's actually granted. 
So that's where the discretion comes in, correct, Conrad? Oh, well, yeah. It's, it's discretionary um, determination. Um, what the, uh, you know, how many years, what the percentage is. Okay. You know, I think, I think that also speaks to there not being a precedent because of previous issues. But each individual consideration right. on its own exactly. merit has its own on its merit. Own, on its own merits, Mark. Right. Yeah. That was my understanding. Yeah. There's not an indication because of previous experience that each consideration is each okay. original yeah. consideration. Yeah, so that's the way. So okay. should we be should we move forward with such until we know whether there's any kind of liability? Uh, at the moment, until we know. I mean, I think you should. Wouldn't, wouldn't that also help if there were other considerations or folks that apply that you had this in place? Then obviously you, it would. You got to be ready for it. You got to okay. be ready. For Otherwise, it. if we're, we don't have that, then you can't consider it because it's not included. Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying not move forward at all. I'm just. <clears> saying and maybe until that question was answered, maybe we needed to make some amendments to this. But, you know, it's uh, that's why you're moving forward. So you can make some amendments if you have to. You can, you can change your ordinance if you want to. But as it stands, you may not even need to. And, and this would not be part of the ordinance. This no. is just a, a screening mechanism, basically, for TPDA to be able to to make <coughs> a recommendation based upon the criteria that, that you recommend or that you approve. As I foresee it, I'm, you're about finished. Good. Maybe. <laughs> Look at the time. <laughs> as, as I foresee it, is their recommendation would would be a little bit changed from what their other recommendation their previous recommendations. Their recommendation is y'all just need to consider they've they they've done the, the groundwork and then you could then you have the discretion and you can say, you know, I don't think you know, you say, I don't think I want this industry. You know, just like you said. Or we do and this is what we're willing <coughs> to give y'all based upon what uh, your recommendation is, what, what you're saying, what you say you're going to be able to do, you know, because you, a lot of times you might not need to look at that very closely because there's such a thing as puffing. You understand what I'm talking about, puffing? You don't understand what I mean by puffing? No, sir. Puffing means that they're exaggerating what they're going to be able to do. Yes. Which is which, another which, reason. Which, which is going to happen in January because you're going to look at it. Yes, sir. And then if I use if I use the same matrix and, and bring to the board, this is how they scored and this is how they performed, then that maybe gives you a better indication of what actually happened. And determination whether you're going to continue with it. Right. And, and the verbiage on this, as far as the scoring matrix side, <clears throat> I don't know if you're comfortable with these numbers. Um, zero to five is a suggested abatement of 30% for three years, um, and et cetera, et cetera. But it's, it's a suggested abatement. Sure. This is not anything that's mandatory or written in stone. Mm -hmm. So would you like me to put this on place this on the next agenda and move forward? Do we need it on the next one? I, I'm sorry. Yeah, we want to. Where's the next meeting? Uh, November first, I believe. Mm -hmm. The first. That's next Tuesday, right? <clears throat> yes. Okay. Well, if nothing else, putting it on the agenda um, makes it available to the public, yeah. and you can have some feedback from your constituents. Got yeah, the next one? Five, the board to discuss 2021-22 board calendar. Yes. Okay, can you put that over to 
in November. So in November, we have meetings scheduled on November 1st and November 22nd. Mm -hmm. um, November 22nd will be the organization meeting. Now, November 22nd is that Thanksgiving meeting, and I've learned that we will have at least two commissioners out of town. The week prior to that, we have at least one commissioner out of town. So my question on the November <coughs> meeting date, if it would be possible to move the second meeting to November 28th, and also have that date as the state of the county presentation. The number what? The 28th. November 28th. That's the second meeting. And also have it as what? Actually, state of the, state of the county. Actually, that would be, um, I apologize. It should be, well, it could be, the, it should be the 29th. I'm sorry. That's Tuesday. The 29th at 9 a.m. And that would be the second meeting. In November, that would be reorganization and then the state of the county presentation. Yeah, everybody will be back then. Can we uh, we just to do it at 6 p.m.? I'll be looking for the road. 6 p.m. I'll just have to hold staff over, but I think that's fine. Right. Okay. So the 28th or the 29th? Okay. Do it at 6 p.m. Okay, we're going to okay. What about you? Oh, we I think I've got a meeting in uh, the 30th. Okay. Yes, sir. You need the night before. Well, no, we can do it on the 28th. Yeah, okay. I think that's why I said the 28th because your meeting is on the 30th. Okay. I'm going to do 28th or 29th. Right before. 28th. 28th. 6 p.m. Yes. Yes, sir. Here. Yes. If you will, please stand. I will. Thank you, Captain. What you say, Mr. Bishop, you need a reminder? You put it on my calendar. Oh. Yes, sir. I don't have my calendar on my phone. <clears throat> I refuse to do that. <laughs> I got to have that thing. Yeah. It would be too chock a lock full, you know. What's that? I'm going to be too chock a lot close because I'm so <laughs> dang unpopular. <laughs> now, we also need a date for ethics training. So, for those of you who have not taken your ethics training yet, it's a four hour mandated training, mm -hmm. and we need to decide upon a date for that. Well, should, uh, maybe, could we do that at the end of the next meeting, I guess, from Commissioner Fiegel here? I mean, I'm sure she's got, unless she's already done it. Are you talking about the training or is that decision? No, I mean, making the decision on our November sure. first meeting because, I mean, I would assume that we don't want to all schedule and it's not feasible. So what I'll do is I will we'll amend the board calendar and put it on the next agenda and then I'll ask you all about the ethics training at the next meeting. Sure. Okay. And then I think we'll be our our schedule will be set for the remainder of the calendar year because okay. November and December are no workshops, and then December we have scheduled two meetings. The second, the meeting on the 19th, is really just to approve bills and anything else that cannot wait. If possible, I like to go to that ethics training. If possible. Well, we'll have it in the boardroom, um, and it's online. The date, the date is. Well, could I do it from my office? You could. <clears throat> you uh, actually, um, might have to pay him then. We would. Right? We'd have to pay I don't, him too. No, I'll, I'll come here. I, okay. They don't need any money. So, so I think, is that meeting at five or six? Six. 6 p.m. on the 19th of December. Yes, sir. So the 19th of December. So on the 5th and the 19th, the 19th of December, both meetings at 6 p.m. That's no change. Why do I have 9 a.m. on the 19th? What do you have? I think that you, because normally we would, but for this meeting, it's at 6. And I'm not sure why, I cannot recall why 
they were actually to, I think they requested it at the beginning of the calendar year when we did all these date adjustments. That was the one we were going to do just to approve the, the bills. The yes. bills, right? We weren't really going to have them. Unless anything else comes up. That's no change. It's been that way. What? Not, it's been on our calendars the 19th. Yes, sir, at 6 p.m. Yeah, at 6. Yes, sir. And then the other one is the 5th. Yes, sir. Morning? No, they're both no, at 6 p.m. Both at 6, okay. It's on my calendar, I'm sure. And, and that was probably to accommodate um, work schedules. Yeah. Tomorrow, they move the call. Sure. Okay, we will put that on the next agenda. Mm -hmm. Board to discuss economic development and incentive ordinance. So, um, when I was reviewing the economic development ad valorem tax exemption um, codified ordinance, I came across a codified ordinance named Economic Incentive Program. Um, this ordinance was adopted in 2006, and it is uh, basically another economic incentive program mm -hmm. um, with different qualifications. Yes. So my question to the board is if you would like to repeal the economic incentive program ordinance since we have the economic development as a long tax exemption ordinance in place. Because they seem very, very, very familiar and I'm wondering if, for whatever reason, we just did not repeal that ordinance. Are we need a motion to repeal it? No, sir. You just need to let me know if you'd like me to place it on the agenda to ask you to repeal it. I think it's just a housekeeping item, honestly. Well, because here's <laughs> how you repeal an ordinance: is you pass an ordinance repealing the ordinance. Okay. Correct. So we would put it on the agenda to yeah. consider. Instructing the county attorney. And I would suggest that everybody take a look at that ordinance, decide whether you want to do that and may not want to do it. If, did y'all see it in your packets? Yeah. Yeah. You said you do or you don't. I'm just saying take a look at it and determine whether you want to right. repeal it or not. Or consider repeal, excuse me, consider repealing it after a public yeah, hearing. You've got super puff in it, you've got Thule in it, you've got a... Uh, no, that's the economic development ad valorem tax exemption ordinance that we are currently utilizing. This is a, an additional ordinance named Economic Incentive Program <coughs> that is very similar. Um, and so I'm wondering, I don't know if you remember, Comrade, if the intent was. Is it right here? Economic yes. incentive? Yes. We've well, got two in. That's where I got that in. Oh, I'm sorry. Super plus? No, it should not. It should. Oh, sure. yeah. Read it right No. Okay, no, that's the Avalon tax exemption. This is a. This, this is a separate ordinance. So okay. this is, these first two pages is the economic incentive program. Okay. All so right. that's the one I'm asking about because it seems to, they seem to be duplicated. Okay. And, and I don't know if you recall, Conrad, if the intent was to repeal. I do not recall. <laughs> so we will think of Unless. I'm assuming you don't want two, two economic incentive programs. Well, let them read, read it both, and then, then they can determine whether they want to put it on, put it on, okay? So do you want this on the next agenda or no? That's for them to decide. Okay. Yes, I would like to. Okay. okay. All right. <clears throat> can you add a copy of both? Yes. Read, read both sides. Both of those. Yes. So you can compare them. What he's saying is. I just want to be able to compare what the one we're getting rid of versus the one that we're looking to keep. Right. So you're just asking that both be in the yeah. agenda. Okay. Yeah, I just want to be able to keep yes. it. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> but I'll put that on the agenda. I'll include mm -hmm. that with the agenda request as well. Yeah. For me, get me straight. Both of them are getting out, right? Yes. Okay. The first two pages of the first one. 
Also on the head. Take a guy full of water. You know, you get real. Okay, that's all. Right. Hey, you need a spray. We'll try to find a way to make that clear. Yeah. Yeah. You highlight it or something. Okay. Or you got something else? Uh, so the last <coughs> item on the workshop agenda is a master project list. Yes, I would like to um, make one correction on under the road project, First Avenue South. Um, it reads the anticipated bid date is fall of 2023. That should be winter of 2022. Um, and the end date, the deadline is June 30th of 2024. Um, we have not received the needed environmental permitting for this project as of yet. Um, we're still working with the EP on those. Um, I did speak to Mr. Dudley this morning and asked him if he anticipated an issue with the completion date. And he said that DOT is very aware of the difficulties we're having with this project. And, you know, they've always been very accommodating if we've had to request an extension. I know the hope for that project was that we would have already put the project out to bid or advertised for bids, and we have not been able to get there yet because of permitting issues. We're, you know, we we don't want to have to mitigate any type of wetland impacts unless um, that's required. It's the same difficulty we had on the Slaughter Road project. And there is quite a backlog, from what I understand, with DEP, and that's not helping the situation. <clears throat> but we are diligently working on it, and I'm hopeful. Actually, I, I was hoping by now we would have it resolved, but it is not resolved as of yet. So we will keep our eyes on that deadline and keep y'all informed on that project because I know that, I mean, we wanted to get to where we could start construction when it was outside of season, um, we'll just have to see. Yeah, well, the one just below that street. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Completion summer 2023, is that right? That's our planning completion. Yeah, now what's 10, 30, 25, 2025? That is the deadline um, for the for the grant. Oh. And we try to keep an eye on that. So if we have <clears throat> You know, if we have complications like we're having with First Avenue South that we don't lose sight that there's a deadline as far as when we have to complete the project. So we have plenty of time to ask for an extension or whatever we need to do. So, so the bid date would be for First Avenue and Cedar Island winter of 2022, is that accurate? Uh, And for the highway safety improvement plan for Beach Road. So we have a lot of moving pieces. Good. Ready? Unless you have any questions. Good. Good. I don't have any. Okay. Is this where we get public uh, input? Uh, I don't know. Here we go. Well, yeah, one question, if I could. So, so we say that the bid is winter of 2022 and the deadline is 2022 on the safety improvement plan. Is that going to be a conflict of an issue? You know, I don't believe so. Okay. Um, but we'll, we'll keep an eye on that. Mind you, 